once again everyone this is Bob Martin the RC sub guy and I've got another project to share with you uh, you have seen some updates uh, of this DeBoer 148 scale skipjack class submarine uh, in some of my earlier videos and I'm happy to say the project is complete and uh, I have just finished running the boat in my local pond for her maiden voyage very happy to report that it went without a hitch. It's a beautifully running boat. I'm gonna take a few minutes, walk you through how this boat is set up, and at the very end, we'll show you how she performed on and under the water. So let's start with a general overview of the submarine and all the components. Uh, we'll move from right to left. This is the transmitter that controls everything. It's a VEX computerized six channel radio transmitter. Uh, we got a remote on off key fob here and that turns the model on and off remotely so you don't need to crack into it. Everything is powered by a 12 volt, five amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Uh, the hold down for the watertight cylinder was 3D printed with stainless steel hardware. We have the mounting bracket for the onboard video camera that mounts to the back um, as an option or you can run it without. And then we've got the main cylinder itself. Um, this is uh, actually a beautiful cylinder and I'm not entirely sure of the origins. It's a low pressure pump style ballast system. Uh, we've got a vented tank in here that vents out through a hose uh, and up through this periscope right here. And the way this works is uh, to dive, the solenoid valve opens and the pump kicks on, pumps water into the ballast tank. The air escapes out the hose and out the top. And kind of a neat feature of this is once the ballast tank is completely full, you'll actually see water eject through the periscope uh, in a little bit of a spray. So that's kind of a neat feature as well. Uh, got a full ballast tank in here. It's just the perfect size for this boat. Uh, and then we have our business end. We've got our five channel receiver, speed controller, uh, two servos, pitch controller. We've got a fail safe unit in here. And if we take a look at the bottom, we can see the uh, main drive motor and a belted drive system. So everything runs really smoothly, really quietly. Uh, as I said, this is a great boat. Um, this is the wire lead, a waterproof connector for the LED lighting in the conning tower. The hull itself was created by uh, Dennis DeBoer and it's 48th scale. I believe it's about 63 or 64 inches in overall length with an 8 inch beam. So it's a tremendous size. It's got a lot of presence on and under the water as you'll see from the video a little bit later on. Um, this particular boat was um, or came to me with all of the stickers uh, and dry transfers for the USS Shark. So now that you've had an overview of the boat, let's get into the details about how you install all the running gear and get it ready for the pond. Access to the interior of the hull occurs through uh, two spots. One is at the back here. It's a stainless steel thumb screw. Um, you can undo that just by hand. And the other one is up in the front here and you can see the uh, stainless steel bolt and that just unscrews and there we go and now the top of the boat can be removed so I like to grab it by the, uh, the sail here and from the back just give it a little wiggle and it lifts straight up since I've got this, let's take a look at the bottom. We've got all that flotation foam in there. We've got a clear plastic hose for the ballast system. And then we've got the wire lead for the LED lights as well. 
The other thing to note is the linkage for the sail planes. That runs up into the front here and uh, moves forward and back and you can see the planes moving or hopefully you can in the top there. So let's set this out of the way and move on to the installation of the cylinder. Installation of the cylinder is a very straightforward process. Uh, basically we're just going to grab the cylinder uh, in the center, make sure that the wire doesn't get trapped. I'm going to grab the drive shaft here and we're going to mate it up to this dog bone connector in the back. Get that in place. There's a holder in the back, a stop, that stops the cylinder from sliding back. And then you just drop the front in place. And now it's there. These magnetic connectors click on and all of our linkages are made up. Just take a closer look at that. As I said, magnetic connectors, very strong magnets. They disengage uh, really easily by forcing aside, but they snap very uh, aggressively into place uh, and they hold really, really well. The other thing I want to show since we're in the back here uh, is the on-off switch. This is um, the remote on-off switch. The blue wire is the antenna. The entire unit has been potted in resin, so it's completely waterproof. And since we're at the back here, what we're going to do is make up this waterproof connector for the rear of the cylinder. So you can see this connection has been made up. I'm just going to make sure that it's nowhere near my drive shaft, that there's no wires going to interfere with my linkages. And it looks like everything is in good shape. Let's move up to the front. We're going to drop our battery in place slips in underneath and the weight of it uh, keeps it in place there. We're going to make up the connection for the battery in the front here the same as we did in the back and we can do that because the switch is in place stopping power from getting to our cylinder. All that done we are going to drop the cylinder holder in place and if this doesn't line up perfectly you can just wiggle it until it does. The whole thing will twist and this maintains the correct alignment. That done, you simply tighten down the stainless steel bolts and your cylinder is in place, tight and unable to move at all. Now that everything is uh, in place on the inside, let's just give it a little test. Turn on our transmitter first and then power for the cylinder. Now that everything is uh, working, we can test the functionality. So we've got um, on the right hand stick, the bow planes and the stern planes are on the same channel and they're also run through an automatic pitch controller. We've got on the right hand stick as well, the uh, rudder and there's the dive planes again. And we've got the throttle on the left stick. Nice and smooth and quiet. Uh, again, just looking at the front here, this is the forward servo for the sail planes. Now that we've checked everything and it is uh, functional, what we can do is put the top of our hull on and uh, two connections that we're going to need to make up. We've got our wiring connector for the LED lights that presses together and then screws down. And then we've got the hose for the ballast system. You can see now that I've got the um, power connected to the LED lights, our LED lights are on as well. So making sure that we haven't trapped 
any wires or hoses. We set the back in place, front in place, and just press straight down. This is a removable hatch cover for the um, removable camera. And that goes on uh, in the back. It just drops into place. The weight of the brass rod keeps that in place. I'll go through the installation of the camera there in a moment. But let's just double check the uh, functions. What you need to do is uh, just give these sailplanes a little wiggle and then uh, actuate your planes forward and back. And what these will do is the uh, magnet will snap into place. There we go. So you can see our sailplanes working now, as well as our stern planes, rudders working, and the throttle is working. Everything is in great shape, ready for the bond. Let's go over the installation of the camera, if you're so inclined. What you need to do um, is you can either, with the, the hull off, press up from the bottom, or you can uh, just simply pry it up very gently with like a fine bladed screwdriver just remove the hatch. So you can see two holes, a big hole and a little hole. And what we're gonna do is align this small brass pin with the small hole, drop it down, put the screw down into the big hole, and tighten it down. And what we've got now is a rock solid mount for the camera system. And the neat thing about this is the entire thing simply slips back and locks into place. Now we've got a little DSRV kind of looking camera system pointing towards the sail, catching some really interesting footage as it operates. Well, there you go, guys. This is the uh, finished USS Shark Skipjack class submarine in 148th scale uh, by DeBoer Hulls. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, overview of how the submarine goes together. If you stay tuned here for the next few minutes, I'll show you how the boat performed on and under the water. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope you come back. View my website at nautilusdrydocks.com for lots of other projects, information, and resources about the RC submarine hobby. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy, signing off. Thanks for joining me.